I want to greet you today in the name of Jesus Christ, the only hope for this lost and dying world. My wife and I are missionaries here in the Philippines. We brag about Jesus Christ. He promised, wow, I will never leave you or forsake you. He also promised these signs shall follow those that believe. Yes, we choose to brag on Jesus, to trust Him, to keep His promises. The unction of the anointing we know continues to flow from Resurrection Day to the current day in which we live. As uh, missionaries, we have chosen the foolish route to go. The uh, work of a missionary is the uh, least chosen route to serve the Lord. Many are called and they will be called to your church if you have a, a big church. They're not always inspired by God to start a new church or to plant a new church but if you have many people in your church if you don't have a pastor they feel comfortable coming to your church and uh, coming to the congregation built by the previous pastor or the church board but not many hear the hear from God to get out of their financial boat and to walk day by day, step by step with Jesus. Many will talk to you about uh, walking by faith, but they really do not want to walk by faith. But I was born again in 1970, and down through the years, I've seen so many manifestations of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've seen the Lord manifest and uh, keep His promises too many times for me to be able to number. I have seen Him manifest and keep His promises more times than I can count, more times than I can remember. We brag about Jesus. And um, in fact, when I told ministers, leaders in the past that uh, God was calling me and how he was calling me to serve him, they said, Frank, you'll starve to death. Your family will never make it. Uh, the body of Christ will not help. And so years later, my wife and I are here on the mission fields of the Philippines. I, we continue to brag on Jesus. In uh, four years here, we have seen 
we've experienced the lived experience of walking by faith we have lived the lived experience of watching him do that which is impossible for us to even plan to dream about for four years he has done what is impossible in the eyes of so many ministers in the body of Christ too many times they equate large sums of money with their ability to um, do what God has called them to do. Each month we look at the responsibilities and the need and each month Lord how are we going to be able to do this? It requires His hand. It requires His involvement. And it involves many times that He speak to ordinary people just like you. And if He's speaking to you, if you're one of those ordinary people, uh, men and women of God, and He speaks to you and you want to participate, I've got the link to our crowdfunding site right there. Give, send, go. dot com backslash Frank Blues Williams. We're in um, Tanza uh, Cavite, and um, this Sunday we are scheduled for the clubhouse at the uh, at the Hills View subdivision the clubhouse phase two if you want a good seat the recommended time to arrive to get a good seat is uh, 9 a.m. The music most of the time begins about 9.30 a.m. So if you want to get a good seat, I arrive there at the clubhouse for Hillsview Subdivision Phase 2. Be there about 9 a.m. to get a good seat. Uh, every week the seats fill quickly and um, the music begins about 9.30 a.m. If you um, have your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings chapter 19 and we start the chapter with Ahab the king. Ahab was bragging. He was telling to Jezebel, his very wicked wife. She uh, was devoted to demon worship. She was devoted to the occult, witchcraft. She was sold out in her love and her service. To Satan. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain, sacrificed all the prophets of Baal with the sword. Four hundred demonically inspired ministers 
under the demonic power of hell and how God had moved miraculously for him and that 400 400 uh, of those ministers devoted to witchcraft, devoted to the occult, devoted to demonic warfare, they died. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, Let the gods do to me and more also if I make not your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. When you're doing the work of God, when you're seeing the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, when you see the manifestation of God keeping His promises, you would think that people would rejoice. You would think that they would be happy. But Jezebel, she was upset. She was not happy. And so she made threats, demonic threats to Elijah the prophet. And Elijah was a man. He was devoted to the work of God. He had put his life on the line and he had seen the supernatural power of God manifest for his benefit. And of course he gave to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. He had experienced the live experience of the supernatural power of God manifested in his ministry. It was an awesome move of God. And so Jezebel began to hurl, to throw, to cast supernatural, demonic warfare against Elijah the prophet. She became involved in incantations spells demonic warfare against the man of God. And he was scared. He was suddenly the target for persecution. He was a subject of demonic warfare, demonic activity. You as a man or a woman of God, you at this moment, you can be involved in a spiritual battle. There may be those devoted to Satan, devoted to witchcraft, devoted to the occult, who are actively working against your work of God. This was what was happening here in the ministry of Elijah. Do you think that you are more special than the prophet Elijah? Do you think that Elijah could be a victim and be involved in satanic warfare, spiritual warfare, but you think that somehow you are immune to it? 
that you don't have to worry about this. Elijah the prophet had to be concerned with it, but you think that you are immune? You can't be a target? And when he saw, he uh, arose, he got up, and went for his life. He was so frightened. He was so intimidated. He got up and he ran for his life. And he came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servant there. The Bible does not identify who his servant was, but he was scared. He didn't take his student who was learning to be a prophet. He was so frightened, he was so intimidated that he left his student behind. Does that happen in the body of Christ today? Yes. There are men and women of God who get so frightened under satanic spiritual warfare that there has been an endless list of leaders who have fled for their life and they have forgotten the students that they were teaching how to be a prophet. They ran. Elijah ran and left his student behind. But he himself went a, a day's journey into the wilderness. Remember, the Bible tells us another man of God, his name was was Moses and he made a, a mistake in his life and Moses was in such tremendous fear that Moses also fled into the wilderness you can be a man or a woman of God you can be under satanic attack and you can be tempted sometimes you can be driven chased into the wilderness do you find yourself afraid intimidated have you been chased into the wilderness you might say not me but I remember the spring of 2020. I remember when the satanic warfare of COVID came upon the world and the government authorities, the leaders around the world, they were so frightened. They told you to stay home from the house of God. They were so frightened. Stay home for at least two weeks till we can flatten the curve. You were told to stay away from the house of God. You were told to stay in your homes, not even to go outside. And if you did choose to worship God they told you not to sing that if you were going to worship God you had to keep your mouth shut and if you were going to sing you could not sing where people could hear you how many people how many men and women of God how many churches around the world obeyed the government. How many of them were so 
intimidated, so scared that they were frightened into the wilderness of silence. I know that here in the Philippines when everything was so bad, we turned on the television station to tur turn on the television to look for Christian programming. There was nothing to be found. They were repeating the same messages day by day, hour by hour. There was no fresh word of God that was coming forth. Some people have more trust in scientists that do not believe in the living God, that they put more trust in science than they put in the Word of God. You'll remember that uh, when Jesus rose again, the women ran to tell the apostles that Jesus was alive. And the apostles, those who studied and walked with Jesus all that time, they heard the news, they were his students, and they said the word seemed to them, the news seemed to be like an idle tale, like a story. It seemed to be like a myth. But then Peter suddenly stood up and he ran toward the garden. And John, his friend, John the Apostle, stood up and ran also. And they ran and found the empty tomb just the way that Mary said, just like she testified. People today, many, too many of you find yourself in the wilderness today, intimidated by Satan, depressed, despondent, because you did you chose to give in to your fears. You gave in to the intimidation and you ran from God. And he began to sit under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. He was so depressed, he was so despondent that he was asking Lord to take away my life. For I am not better than my fathers. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. When you're tired, you can be hungry. You can be depressed. You can be despondent. The best thing to do is to be still and know that Jesus Messiah is still our shepherd. And because Jesus Messiah is our shepherd, we don't want. He makes us. He doesn't offer us. He, our, Jesus, our Messiah, makes us lie down 
in green pastures. Makes us to rest. And here, arise and eat. And, uh, and he looked and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. I don't can't say for certain but it looks like there was a pancake there on a stone a pancake in a cruise of water and he eat and he drank and laid down again. He had to rest. He needed more sleep. And the angel of the Lord came to him a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Today, there are too many in the body of Christ that would ever be humble enough to listen, to hear from God, to hear from the Holy Ghost, to admit that they are depressed, to admit that they are hungry, to admit that they need to rest. But the Bible tells us that Jesus, Messiah, our shepherd, our good shepherd, makes us to lie down in green pastures. He makes us. He doesn't ask. He tells you to lay down, to eat, and to rest. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. He went on a forty day fast. And he didn't just not eat, but he was he traveled 40 days and 40 nights into Horeb, the Mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. See, he was so frightened, he ran into a cave. He ran to the cave and began to lodge there. That means he began to sleep there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, Elijah, what are you doing here? How did you get here? Many times, believers silently ask the Lord, Why am I here? Why did this happen to me? Why do I find myself in such a place and time as this? Do you suppose that God... That you suppose that the Holy Ghost allows you to be where you are in the situation you find yourself? You think it's just coincidence? Do you think that it's by accident? Or do you believe that God has you there for a purpose? See, here in the Philippines, God hasn't chosen to give us 
plenty of money. He didn't give us plenty of money to feed hungry people. He didn't give us uh, plenty of money to shelter people who needed shelter. He didn't give us plenty of money to educate people who needed to be educated. He didn't give us plenty. He wants to for us to brag not about how wise and how smart we are, but he wants us to brag what his hand has allowed us to do even when we did not have the money to do what he has allowed us to do. He doesn't want you to be able to say he gave us billions of dollars for this. He gave us plenty of money for this. No. He wants all of the praise, all of the glory, all of the honor. In Matthew chapter 10, beginning about verse 40, he says to us who are missionaries, he says, those who receive you also receive me. Those who help you as a missionary to do, to complete the assignment that I have given, you will receive a reward just like the missionary. And he says, yes, even if you give simply a cup of cold water to a little child because a disciple asked, a student asked, you will not lose your reward. Even if it's just a cup of cold water to a child because a disciple, a student asked for your help, you will not lose your reward because you're helping the man or woman of God to accomplish the task that God has assigned for them to do. So, he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. I've been very busy doing what you have assigned me to do. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. I can tell you now that most in the body of Christ, they have also forsaken your covenant. They have, they have forsaken their covenant, thrown down your altars, closed down your churches, closed down your uh, pulpits, and slain thy prophets with the sword. They've killed the people of God. They've for killed those who have been faithful. How many children of God have refused to tithe to the to help the man or woman of God? How many of you have ever heard of let's starve out the pastor? Let's get 
bit of this pastor and let's get a, another pastor that will do what we want. And he says, I, I am the only one left and they seek my life to take it away. Yes, people today in the body of Christ, they forget what God has done in their life. Dottie Rambo wrote a song, Remind Me, Remind Me, Dear Lord, Remind Me Where You've Brought Me From and where I should have been. Where would you be if Jesus didn't give you a testimony in your life? If you can't give a testimony about what Jesus Christ has done in your life, you are not a believer. If you can't testify about anything that God has done for you in your life, you probably have not been born again. Because if you've been born again, you will not be ashamed to brag on Jesus. You will not be shy about telling those in the world what Jesus has done in your life. You should have an endless amount of testimonies how the Lord has rescued you, what He's done for you recently. And if you can't share, if you're afraid to share, Jesus teaches, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Get right with the Lord. Make things right with Him. And so, he said uh, to, he said uh, to Elijah, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, he went out looking, expecting to hear from God. So, and behold, as he went out and stood upon the mountain, waiting to hear from God, behold, the Lord passed by. Are you waiting for the Lord as He passed by? There's a song. I wait upon the Lord as He passed by. I pray I'm not too busy, or He's not too busy to hear my heart's cry. Do you do that today? You and so Elijah this did this, and the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore at the mountain before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the... He wasn't in the tornado. 
He wasn't in the earthquake and the Lord was not in the wind but he sometimes sometimes our God is in the wind and the Lord was not in the earthquake but we know that sometimes God does speak to his children in earthquakes sometimes he does so in the tornado or the typhoon he wasn't there but sometimes he works and speaks through hurricanes sometimes he speaks through typhoons sometimes he does speak in the earthquake And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. But we know from the word of God that sometimes he does speak to us through the fire. Sometimes he speaks to us in the flames. Sometimes he does. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so, even when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and says to Elijah, What are you doing here? As a missionary, the Lord has allowed me to minister in several U.S. states, several churches. It allowed me to go into several churches here in the Philippines and also in Cuba. I've been in so many worship services or the music was so loud I could not hear myself speak. I've had music that was so loud that I could not hear when people came up for prayer. I couldn't hear them. I couldn't figure out what they were trying to say. And I know that this is against the uh, approved way to do things, but there have been times when to hear, I had to ask for the music to be lowered, to turn down the volume. In Cuba, I had... I had um, laryngitis or pharyngitis. I had to minister in a whisper. In a missionary meeting, campaign for Jesus. In order to minister to the people, I had to be obedient and speak to the people in a whisper. A whisper. And my interpreter had to hear what the Lord was given and to listen close to the whisper. And there was no loud music 
just what I heard from the Lord in a whisper. There was a television commercial back in the 70s, early 80s. Be a crowd of people, elegant people, in a fancy dress, tuxedos, suits. You could see that they were very wealthy, very successful. And the point would, would come in the commercial where the spokesman would say, or the actor would say, my advisor is E.F. Hutton. And E.F. Hutton says, and then the whole restaurant, everybody gets quiet because they want to know the advice. They want to know what E.F. Hutton has to say. Brothers and sisters, this world needs to know what Jesus, Messiah, Son of the living God, they need to know the words of Jesus, Messiah, the only hope for this world. We as men and women of God, we should not have to shout to be heard. People should desire to hear from God. And we are not deaf. I think that we should pay attention to hear as he whispers to you. You should listen and when he whispers to you, you need to hear from God. Jesus teaches that those who hear his teachings and apply them right away to their life, they are among the wise. They build upon the rock. But those who hear, they procrastinate. They've got to think about it. Jesus says, if you're in that crowd, you're foolish. And you build upon sand. You build upon an artificial foundation. And when the storms come, the collapse will be great. Because your life, your career, your family is not built on that solid foundation. Father, I pray for those who have ears to hear, even when you speak in a whisper. You promise that your sheep hear your voice and they will not follow the voice or the teachings of another. Let those who have ears to hear, hear and receive from the whisper of God even today. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can communicate with us right here on this platform. You can go to our crowdfunding site, uh, givesendgo.com backslash Frank Luz Williams. Send your prayer request your testimonies. The other day, we got a urgent prayer request. A woman of God, her family was many miles away, and she had heard that they were in a deadly 
car accident and that her mother was laying by herself in the middle of the street and did not know what was going on and asked for believers around the world to begin to pray. And the situation was very bleak for her entire family that was caught in that accident. But believers around the world saw the request and began to agree in prayer. I don't have all the details, but the testimony is that God heard and that there was no loss of life. And so the testimony continues. If you have a prayer request, a testimony, or if you want to help in our work of God here in the mission fields of the Philippines, give sengo.com backslash Frank Luz Williams. The Lord will tell you what to do and how much you can send. And if you do it for us, you doing it as unto the Lord Himself, and the Lord repays His debts. Have a good day. Dios Libendega. May God bless you wherever He sends you to do. Take the Lord with you via Candios and Asta Luego. We look forward to hearing from you soon. God bless you. Jesus loves you.